Any health-related information on the following show provides general information only. Content presented on any show by any host or guest should not be substituted for a doctor's advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any new diet, exercise, or treatment program. Hi, everybody. Today, we are going to be talking about a very important topic. If you know me, you know I am Sarah Bant, if you're new to me. Um, I've got three, three kids. And the reason that I am into this business is because of the severe health issues that not just one, but all three of my kids have had. I truly believe God has given all five of our family members some sort of health issues that are different from each other so that I have to be an expert in solving all of these issues. And, you know, my son at nine years old was diagnosed with leukemia. He's now a 20 year old college student, has been a, a national record holder in rowing, um, does not miss a day of school because he's sick. And not one of my kids have been on antibiotics. So I have come across these things that actually work. And today we're going to be talking about one of the most important and my passion for children's health is through the roof. I want to take care of all of you adults, but our kids are our future and they are suffering significantly. And the accelerated silver is one of the ones that ha I've, I've had since the very beginning. This is the one that truly helped um, my son with all of his health issues, immune boosting and helping all of us kind of get to that great level of immunity. However, there is a second and equally important one, and that's iodine. So today we're going to be talking about children and iodine. Um, it's really easy to get children to take the silver, it tastes like water, looks like water, and they get ownership of what they're, they're taking control of their own health, where the iodine does have a flavor to it. You need to dilute it with water. So, you know, you need to really talk to your children about the importance of things and get them to buy in to why they're taking any supplement, why they're eating healthy food and getting them on the right track. And over the next couple of weeks, I will be focusing on children's health. But like I said, today we're going to focus on iodine. Many practitioners question whether it's safe to give children iodine supplements and they don't recommend more than 150 to 290 micrograms daily for anyone, let alone children. But not only do children and pregnant women need iodine, but their needs are actually more important than the general population. And many leading iodine experts suggest at least 12 thousand to 18,000 micrograms daily, which is about 45 times higher. So why the discrepancy? It is very confusing and practitioners are confused as well. But did you know that 96% of the United States population is deficient in iodine? So if you're not taking an iodine supplement, you are deficient. And the problem is our food supply is deficient of it now. Um, the, the sources of iodine that used to be great sources are now toxic. They're full of um, the radiation and the heavy metals that we don't want to get in our body in the, in the first place. And the iodine is needed to detox the body for um, of those, those things. So why would we want to put an iodine supplement in our body that is carrying those tox those toxins. So what are the symptoms of iodine deficiency? It's puffy skin, hoarse voice, sparse or coarse hair. So if you have hair loss, impaired mental functioning, depression. Did you know that the number one um, risk factor for depression is iodine deficiency? Other sy symptoms for children and fetuses mental retardation, dyslexia, ADHD, hyperactivity, short stature, um, decreased chi uh, child survival, miscarriages, stillbirths, apathetic kids with low capacity for movement and speech, Alzheimer's disease, 
Of course, the thyroid, everybody knows iodine is needed for thyroid health, but sometimes they're a little worried about it because their doctors say they need to, they need to be careful with any iodine um, supplementation if they have thyroid issues, but then also breast cancer. Why do pregnant women and children need that iodine? I'm going to go through quite a laundry list. Um, number one, that it supports apoptosis. Apoptosis, you've heard me talking about, is programmed cell death of unhealthy cells to protect against cancer and to facilitate healthy growth in fetuses and children. During pregnancy, the fetus undergoes more apoptosis than in any other developmental age. So think about it. That baby is, or that fetus is changing, changing, changing. That's apoptosis, the, the program cell death of the cells that need to die and the new cells that are coming out. So it's really important for those fetuses. Even the FDA suggests 47% more iodine for pregnant women and 93% more for lactating women. So they're even recognizing the importance above and beyond the general population for iodine supplementation. Iodine increases IQ. Low iodine is associated with low IQ, a difference of up to 13.5 points as cited by the Bleakrot um, study of children. And iodine not only chelates or removes lead, but prevents lead from lodging in the body in the first place. Now, not just lead, but all of the halogens. Go back to chemistry class. Remember, iodine is in the same family as the chloride the, or the chlorine, the bromide, and um, the fluoride. So in our food and water, we are being loaded with toxins, that fluoride, the chlorine in the water, iodine, if you are deficient in iodine, those other halogens are going to fill the iodine receptor sites, not just in your thyroid, which is going to slow down your thyroid, but in your brain, in your pineal gland, which is your third eye, which is where you have um, awakenedness, or it's your spiritual health, whether, you know, it's your, it's the thyroid is the bridge from your brain to your body. So if the thyroid is lodged with all those toxins and your pineal gland is, that's why you're in a, a fog or an experienced brain fog, but it lowers mental capacity in general. It also is why you have um, depression, anxiety, suicidal tendencies, and a variety of psychiatric disorders. So it's really important for that brain health. And if your thyroid isn't functioning right, which most people right now are suffering from hypothyroidism, that also decreases brain circulation, which slows intellectual function and causes um, cognitive impairment. So you're kind of getting this double whammy where the iodine is is um, not getting to the brain, you're absolutely slow, circul slow circulation in the brain and low function because of that. But your pineal gland is clogged from those halogens, right? And then your thyroid's slow because of a lack of iodine, which is then causing more brain fog, less brain circulation and intellectual function. So it truly is a, a double whammy. Now, as I'm talking, please join the chat if you have any questions. I'm going to have plenty of time for questions today. So please join the chat. And every Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific time when I do these shows, please join live and join the chat. Next, iodine improves mood, as I mentioned. I think um, every child is suffering from some level of depression and anxiety. Yes, it's the social media. I do a big blog on addiction and depression and all of those factors. Social media is an addiction and that is causing part of it because of the dopamine responses. But it's also because of these phones that we have that we they are on and the EMFs, right? We are being constantly bombarded by these EMFs and that's part of it. But then what else? It is a lack of iodine. 
Depression and anxiety, they're rampant. Iodine helps decrease those mood disorders. And research has shown, this is really interesting and no one puts together this fact, parasites in the gut eat up the serotonin, 95% of which is produced in the intestines. When parasites are destroyed with iodine, there's an increase in serotonin, which helps elevate the mood and improve overall mental functioning. One quick story about that is that I have a client that started out on the iodine and she said, oh my gosh, it made me so sick. I had to stop. And then she said, Sarah, you won't believe what happened. I started doing some colonics. I cleared that out. I was able to start now doing the iodine. Her liver was so toxic and backed up. And as soon as she started doing that, she actually saw some parasites in the toilet um, and she feels great. She's now com continued on the regimen of increasing her iodine dosage to the sufficient amount now. And I'm going to get to this down at the, at the end on the dosing and how you do do it slowly, because not only as you're feeding every cell in the body, every 100 trillion cells in your body, not just in your thyroid or your brain, but every single place in your body, you're also kicking out those toxins. So you do have to do it slowly. Iodine helps negate those EMF side effects of the cell phone, of the Zooms, of the computer work that you're doing all day long, of the smart meters that are on our houses, which I recommend you get them off if you can. Um, you are constantly being exposed to EMFs around, around the clock. And a recent study in the Internal Journal of Radiation Biology shows that frequency emitted by cell phones induces hypothyroidism. So there it goes again, back to the thyroid. Your thyroid is the master endocrine gland. If that's not working, you have brain fog, you have slow metabolism, unexplained weight gain, um, you, low circulation, constipation, the amount and your hair's falling out. And you can research on um, sarabantahealth.com where I put all of my articles and videos those links are there. I talk about the side effects of hypothyroidism. But if if you were to guess how many people are suffering from suboptimal thyroid today, especially after the last two years of what we've gone through, I would I would say that it's at least over 80% of the people. And this is affecting our children as well. So if you're somebody who is experiencing weight gain that doesn't make sense, or your hair is all of a sudden falling out, um, or you have that brain fog, blurred vision, ringing in the ears, all of that can be tied to the EMFs and a lack of iodine and thyroid issues. Iodine helps support protein synthesis. Because it's essential in the thyroid hormone synthesis, it affects increased protein synthesis and increased oxygen consumption. Thyroid hormones are essential for children as they activate key biochemical reactions, including that protein synthesis, enzymatic activities, and organ development, including in the brain, heart, muscles, pituitary, and kidneys. You have to think, you as an adult, you're done growing. Your growth hormone is declining, unfortunately, and your other hormones are declining as well. Now, I get into reverse aging and how to kick those things up, but let's just take a look at the kids now. Their brains, their bodies, their muscles, all of those organs are developing. They need every single ounce of nutrition and help they can get to be their optimal selves. It is not that, oh, my kid, yeah, they're they're eating just like everybody else, the standard American diet. When they become an adult, then we'll start getting them to eat clean and taking supplements. No, that is the wrong um, attitude because these kids have this short window of period where they have all of these amazing growth factors, which I would love to have now as an, a 46 year old adult. And I'm trying to get them back with all of the other things I do for reversed aging. But think about all of their organs, their brain, their heart, their muscles, 
why not give them this, this benefit of increased IQ, increased mood, increased protein synthesis? We need to take those good wild animal proteins and, me, and the amino acids that I'm ta- that I always talk about and have them actually work in the body and be able to synthesize and be used as those building blocks. Okay, next, iodine destroys pathogens, mold, fungus, parasites, like I mentioned, and malaria. In an age of antibiotics, where the superbugs are evolving, iodine can be used effectively to treat um, and to help and prevent any infections. And it actually was used during the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. Um, Before antibiotics and before anything else was used, it was used successfully to help fight that pandemic. So it is really important for your immune system, along with the accelerated um, scalar silver. That's why the two of them are two of the four supplements in my immune bundle. Um, It is a no brainer. My son is in college, first week of school. You know, everyone's excited, stressed, You know, maybe there's some drinking going on, of course, not by him, but by everybody else. Um, But anyways, all of this excitement going on, right? Any of you who have um, children in college know that that first couple weeks, everybody gets sick. And it's because the immune system is on high alert, just because all of these kids are all of a sudden getting back together, sharing germs, flus, viruses, cold, whatever it is. And um, so what did I tell them to do? Drink your silver, take your iodine, and make sure you're taking your electrolytes. Those three things are an absolute, absolute must. And yes, it, the iodine works as an, uh, boosting the immune system because it's anti-inflammatory and that plays an important role in the immune system. All diseases are associated with inflammatory responses and the iodine it becomes key. For, for that function. It also, as I mentioned, eliminates those halogen toxins. The children today are consistently consuming a diet filled with GMOs, bromine, fluoride, chloride, or chlorine, pesticides, herbicides, and more. Even if you don't spray your own house, the schools they go to are being sprayed with the pesticides. Even if you're eating all organic food, the not the organic crops are being sprayed with the overspray. Even if you're eating grass-fed, grass-finished meats, they are possibly getting exposed so, to some of these halogen toxins that we're talking about. Iodine helps dislodge these toxins safely. So as the iodine is getting into the the thyroid and every tissue, it is then actually kicking out the other um, toxins. And did you know uh, bromine is illegal in Europe? And it is one of the main ingredients in our bread and in uh, some of our other food supplies. So you really are a salmon swimming upstream when you're trying to focus on eating the proper foods and uh, escaping some of these toxins. Iodine regulates estrogen production. It governs estrogen production by, um, by the ovaries and estrogen and progesterone compete for the same receptor site and infertility and miscarriage are both associated with estrogen dominance and progesterone deficiency, which links back to that iodine deficiency. On sarabantahealth.com, there is an article about estrogen dominance and it really is important. I dive deep into why you need to be supplementing with iodine just for that. Um, Estrogen dominance is for men and women. So if you're a man that is, has plenty of testosterone and you work out and you um, eat right and you're doing all the right things, but you're not getting that, that physique that you want and you um, don't have that vitality that you're hoping for as you get older, it's estrogen dominance. And I go into what, how that could be related to some gut issues, leaky gut, 
and some other things. But iodine deficiency is a huge factor. The World Health Organization itself has related iodine deficiency to decreased fertility and increased perinatal and infant death. Okay, so we're not just talking about, um, you know, natural practitioners. We're talking about even the World Health Organization. And when you look at the history of iodine studies and dosage recommendations, the results are drastically different. As early as 1911, people normally took between 300,000 and 900,000 micrograms without negative side effects. Those are huge doses. So people do ask me all the time, what are the overdose um, symptoms? What should I be looking out for? And, and, and it is known that the iodine dosages have come down very quickly in history. Why is that? Well, in 1948, we're going to go back to a little history. There was a poorly performed study that was never replicated, concluded that theoretically hypothyroidism could occur as a result of excess iodine. And this was known as the wolf shakeoff effect. Even in the study, they recommended a dose of 2000 micrograms daily, which was way higher than what they're recommending today. Following the study, no clinical symptoms of hypothyroidism have ever been noted with higher dosing. And um, it, they state that people may safely take 10,000 to 200 micrograms without clinically adverse effects. One of the reasons practitioners fear excess iodine supplementation is that there may be a transient increase of TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone for six months. That is why I tell people not to test um, in their blood or do anything about their results within the first six months of starting a regimen with acceleridine. Um, this is related to the fact that the whole body is deficient in iodine, not just the thyroid. And TSH stimu stimulates that production of the sodium iodide symporter or what's called the NIA, NIS. Without an, enough NIS, iodine cannot enter the cells or be utilized. So what happens is you start taking the iodine, your thyroid wakes up, and then the rest of your body says, hey, wait a second, I'm waking up too, I want some of that, and TSH shoots through the roof saying, give me more, give me more. It's kind of like that when you're starving and you haven't eaten for three days and maybe you're not hungry anymore because you've forgotten how hungry you are, and you have that first meal and you're like, oh my God, I'm starving and you just want to binge because you're so hungry and every cell of the body is waking up. So think of it that way. Proof that an increase of TSH doesn't necessarily correlate to hypothyroidism is that people who increase their iodine do not have the symptoms of hypothyroidism, such as the fatigue and hair loss, headaches, weight gain, and dry skin, and they maintain the normal T3 and T4 levels. Now remember, T3 and T4 stand for tyrosine and three or four molecules of iodine. Tyrosine, where do we get it? We get it from that wild animal protein. Remember, we want to focus on the, the bison, the elk, the wild, uh, the lamb, the wild um, fish, and the organic eggs. We want to stay away from the chicken and conventional beef because of the amyloid proteins that can not be broken down in the body and can be then lodged into the brain and the tissues and cause things like, like Alzheimer's and dementia. So just a side point, the T3 and T4, we want that tyrosine to come from the wild animal protein. Then obviously the three and four uh, molecules of iodine come from the acceleridine. So the TSH doesn't tell the whole story. So if you are starting the acceleridine and your doctor says, oh my gosh, you've got to stop it right now. The TSH is through the roof. You then will say, well, wait a second. How do I feel? So you want to, you are your best doctor. Essentially, that increase in TSH is temporary. So 
you're waking up those 100 trillion cells and not just the thyroid. So let's go through some of the studies to support iodine supplementation especially with the children. Um, they have been studied as early as the 1900s. So in 1917 through 1922, Dr. David Marine proved that iodine reversed goiter in a study in which 2,000 schoolgirls, this is not a small study, were given the equivalent of 18,600 micrograms daily for two and a half years. This was a huge study. This study was the reason the U.S. began to iodize salt. That was great. Now, we don't want to depend on iodized salt now because most salts have the wrong kind of iodine and are full of microplastics. But back then, it was a great source of iodine. Sadly, today, less than 20 to 25 percent of salt is iodized and is full of those microplastics. So, and with the unfounded no salt, low salt scare from the 1984 study, even fewer are receiving iodine from the iodized salt, which only has about 10% bioavailability anyways. Acceleridine, 100% bioavailability. Okay, another study, potassium iodide, reversed lung cancer tumors in mice um, in 2003 by Dr. Zhang. So he showed that potassium iodide reversed the lung cancer tumors in mice. And the total amount that was administered was 100,000 micrograms daily for 20 days. This is approximately 50, 50 times more than that was re, more than was recommended in that 1948 study. The study lasted for 60 days, and the um, the lung cancer tumors were significantly decreased. A study on fibrocystic breast disease. In 1993, Dr. Ghent administered to 1,368 patients 5,000 micrograms daily. Now, do you notice that all of these studies have huge amounts of micrograms daily given to these, these people and the children with no negative side effects? And there was no um, evidence of that hypothyroidism that they were they were saying was the issue keeping people from overdosing on iodine. Iodine deficiency is not only associated with fibro uh, iodine deficiencies, not only associated with fibrocystic breast disease, but also with higher rates of breast cancer. Those um, were according to Dr. Ghent. Then there was a seven-year study, the Iodine Project. Um, which unveiled multiple positive effects from increased iodine dosages. And this is a really famous study by Dr. Abraham, Dr. Brownstein, and Dr. Fletches. And um, this is called the Iodine Project. You can look it up, conducted from 1997 through 2005. And they followed 4,000 patients, administered 12,500 all the way up to 100,000 micrograms daily of iodine with 100,000 micrograms administered to diabetics primarily because low thyroid function is also associated with type 2 diabetes. And they had positive results with only three adverse reactions out of 4,000 people, possibly allergic reactions to the binding agents or the other um, ingredients in the iodine supplement, or fillers or preservatives. Um, and that's the, the, I go into that as well on sarabantahealth.com as far as, well, maybe you're having an allergic reaction from your iodine supplement, from, from what else is in that supplement, not from the iodine. This research group theorized that because in Japan, the average intake was 13,800 micrograms, and Japan had significantly less breast and prostate cancer and better health and longevity than the U.S., that higher doses of iodine could be safely used. Now, that is um, that was the case. Now, since Fukushima and Chernobyl, their sources of iodine have been contaminated. So that is unfortunate, and that's why it's really 
um, important to, to figure out where you are getting your iodine sources. So back to children. And if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the chat. What is a safe amount for iodine to take? Number one thing to remember, no one has ever died from iodine overdose or an allergic reaction to iodine. The risk to benefit ratio of the recommended iodine dosage is extremely safe for healing. And first taking when you're first taking the acceleridine, which is this little bottle, and it is very potent, do not try to take it directly in your mouth like you can with some other supplements or iodine supplements. And that just shows how potent it is. Um, it is 100% bioavailable. And when you look at most other iodine supplements, they're mostly 10 to 20% bioavailable. So you're not even comparing apples to apples when you talk about iodine supplementation. But it is the only monoatomic, meaning one molecule of iodine, versus diatomic, meaning iodine and potassium, or iodine and sodium, two molecules in the supplement. It's the only toxin-free iodine supplement and has that 100% bioavailability. It's the only one that you can be assured you're not going to have an allergic reaction to. I strongly recommend starting slowly as it detoxes all of the cells of the toxins and radiation as it's providing the sufficient amount of iodine. Now, what is going to speed up that detox process is using the accelerated um, cellular detox powder, the accelerated silver. Those are going to help soak up the toxins and quickly get them out of your, your body. You as an adult, I also recommend the accelerated keto because that's reducing inflammation in the body, helps with fat burning, which also helps with physical and mental energy, cleansing the liver, and helps you to intermittent fast without any hunger. So when you're doing that, you're increasing that ATP production. You're also increasing that autophagy, which is cleaning up all the toxins and the, the, and the bad cells in the body. Um, so the accelerated keto is great as well to use. Children don't necessarily need it, um, but they could definitely use the accelerated cellular detox powder. You want to start with three drops as an adult, three drops in water and an empty stomach three times a day. Increase that dosage by one drop per dose per day until you reach 25 drops three times a day. That protocol has increased over the last two years because of the exposure of toxins and EMFs and all of the other stuff we are going through. Now for children, zero to two, take one fourth of the adult dose. You're gonna start out with just one drop and go slowly. For children two to six, take one half the, the adult dose. And for pregnant women, you actually wanna take up to 47% more than the adult dose. For lactating women, you can actually take up to 93% more than the adult dose. Um, if you have any questions about the iodine, it is so important. Let's just take a look at what's going on right now. Most of you have, are coming to me with hypothyroidism, hair falling out, blurred vision, unexplained weight gain, skin rashes, scar tissue, energy, you're, you've got brain fog. Why You're not supposed to have brain fog. All of these factors, all of these symptoms that we are experiencing right now, they're not normal. It's not part of age. I'm getting a lot of people coming to me saying that their doctor says, oh, it's just because of your hormones. It's part of, you know, um, menopause or Mary perimenopause or just getting older. That is not the case. I'm 46 years old. I feel better physically and mentally with no brain fog than I did as a high school student or even as a college student at Stanford University. If I had the brain power back then that I do now, I wouldn't have wasted so much time studying over and over and over again. And now I can learn things quickly. I can feel better physically and mentally. I take my iodine and my brain wakes up. A lot of people report 
saying that once they start the iodine regimen, that their brain fog lifts and they're now waking up. They're waking up spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, and all of these things are turning around in their life. Their relationships are better. It's because once you're on this health journey that you don't want to stop, you want to continue because you start feeling better. I do my Ascent Diet Cleanse every month. We start the first Monday of every month. And I hate the fact that it actually has the word diet and cleanse in it because you feel great day one. Why do you feel great day one? Because the iodine is waking up your brain and body. The accelerated keto is waking up your brain and body. And you have all of this untapped energy in your body. That iodine is increasing ATP production, which is true cellular energy by 18 times. Not 18%, 18 times. You're increasing that ATP production with the iodine, with the accelerated keto. And when you have them both, you, it's, it's the synergy just goes through the roof. The autophagy, that apoptosis, the cleaning up of the bad cells, the destruction of the of the, the um, disease cells that we want out of our body, they are now making room for the good cells, the replicated good healthy cells that we want. Um, and remember, every one of your 100 trillion cells in your body need that iodine. Then with that cleanse, you feel great. You wake up, your appetite is suppressed, you intermittent fast. People that eat right when they wake up and they're dying to eat because their blood sugar swings are going up and down, right? Well, when you start taking the Acceleridine and the Accelerated Keto, you are going to then be able to intermittent fast. And you might be able to intermittent fast till two or three in the afternoon, even if you're used to eating your breakfast at 7 a.m. What happens is your blood sugar stabilizes. Your body says, oh, why would I need to eat right now? I've got thousands and thousands of calories on my body to burn. Let's let's not waste time digesting food. Let's focus on um, cleaning up all the diseased cells and reducing inflammation throughout the body, getting rid of the oxalates and the toxins and the toxic estrogens, right? And also that accelerated keto is going to start working on your liver function and start improving the, the detoxification of the, the bad estrogens, the xenoestrogens, all of the things from our, our diet and our environment that are bombarding our liver. Well, then as you're taking those, you're incorporating the accelerated ancient salt to hydrate the cells. You're using your ketone or your um, wild lights, which are electrolyte formulas, to supplement your hydration. Did you know that energy comes from hydration and not from food? Eventually you eat, yes, but momentarily, short term, you need the hydration and those minerals and electrolytes. And then you've got your detox powder that soaks up all those toxins and carries them through your bowels gently, avoiding your liver and your kidneys so they're not bombarded. Our liver and kidneys were not meant to deal with the toxins they're dealing with today. They are, were meant to deal with the toxins of our ancestors. So you've got that. And then you have the liver flush as the second part of the 30-day cleanse where you just take a couple extra pills during the day. And then that last day, you flush hundreds to thousands of stones down in the toilet. And what are you eating during this cleanse? You're focused on wild animal protein, eating plenty of it. I'm not asking you to juice. In fact, I actually have a blog and a video talking about why juicing is not a good thing. So you're focused on real whole meats and good nutritionally dense meats. And I go through that. And then particular vegetables for you that are very good for you. And some people have um, issues with detoxing from some healthy vegetables like kale and spinach and broccoli. And I go in, into all of that as well. You want to stay away from some of those vegetables. And we talk about the foods that you can 
use right now. And then the ones after your gut is healed, after your weight is lost, after your brain and your body are working at their optimal level, then you can start reintroducing things. So that is what I wanted to talk about today. Um, please share this information with those out there, especially your pregnant friends and family, your, your moms, and even you. We all need this information and please share, comment below if it's been helpful. I will also be putting the um, link to the free group coaching on Telegram. You can join and you can also in, um, invite your friends and family to that. There's no downside. You join for free and you're just there to learn. And um, let me know how more I can help you. Please subscribe to my channel so you're getting notified with the, with the live links both Mondays and Tuesdays. I now do lives on Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific time, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time, and Tuesdays with my guests at 1 p.m. Pacific time and 4 p.m. Eastern time. Have a great week, and thanks for joining us today.